Hey guys, welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to show you the unboxing, test and the review of the Flashforge Finder 3D printer, so stay tuned! Here is a retail box of the product and some specs. This 3D printer is a fully assembled, it's still Cartesian type 3D printer but it's more like Ultimaker, where the heatbed is moving up and down on the z-axis instead of moving back and forward and the print head is moving in direction x and i axis. Max build volume is 140mm in all direction, layer thickness is 0.05mm, nozzle diameter is standard 0.4, extruder can reach 240 degrees and it supports printing via VIP, USB cable or USB stick. It has 3.5 full color touchscreen, assisted bed leveling and the filament runout detection. It has also removable build plate which makes print removable much easier. On the other hand, the package was great, printer was very well secured inside the box from any impact and nothing was damaged. Very official and smart packaging, I gotta say. There is a quick start guide and it was very easy to follow the steps. To release the print head, you need to cut the two cable ties on each side. And be careful when taking off the tape from extruder flex cable because it's holding very strong. To remove the last piece of protecting foam, you need to lift the print platform. Just use your fingers to lift it up and then just slide it out. In the package you're gonna find 1 kg of Snow White PLA filament, Teflon tube, glue stick, USB cable, tools, AC cable, 24V 3M adapter and USB stick. Installing the filament was very easy, there is a filament cartridge on the back of the printer which keeps the filament protected from UV light and the dust. I really like the design how the filament cartridge is implemented into the printer itself. After I push the filament through the guide teflon tube there is only one thing left. We have to start the printer, heat it up and then push the filament through the extruder down to the printing nozzle. Alright, let's heat up extruder. Heating is done and just push the filament all the way to the nozzle. And push the teflon tube inside. And the filament is installed. Now the software is very easy to understand and simple to use. Leveling the bed just cannot be easier. Just screw down the bed level screws and follow the steps. Inside the print head cover there is a micro switch on the arm of the servo motor which measures the distance from the nozzle to the printing surface. I really like the way how this printer moves. All the movement in all direction in all axes are so smooth and constant. It's continuous jog move. And I noticed when I print something fast, actually the printer smoothly slow itself down and then make a turn, which is very cool. Here I just scroll down fast through the software just to show you what it's contained. For turning off the printer, just press the button and then select power off. And now the overview. Even if this 3D printer has a plastic frame, it actually feels very solid built. In the hand feels rigid and strong and it has a weight of 11 kg without the filament so it's pretty heavy. Removable printing surface has the build tech on it and the printing surface is resting on a stable platform which is supported by 10mm smooth rods which is great. Under the platform the whole bottom is the metal. On the right side there is a USB port and a USB plug. X carriage is a very nicely designed and all the components are nicely packed and protect under this cover and all the cables are implemented into just one flex cable. Belts are rubber and they're nice and tight. 
Under the front frame cover there is a multicolor LED strip and the color of the light is controlling by the software so you can change to any color that you want. On the back of the printer there is a metal cover, serial numbers, DC plug and the main DC switch. Here is a closer look of the filament cartridge. It's pretty cool. Now let's have a look what we have on the USB stick. On this USB stick there is a finder quick start guide, user guide, flash print software, happy 3D printer software installation package, instruction video and test print files. User guide is very detailed and it's clearly tell you everything that you should know. With the flash forged 3D printers there is also slicing software made from the same company and the software is specifically matched to every model. So not only they have a great hardware, they have a pretty nice software as well. After installation, I just select here Flash Forge Finder and I click OK and the program loads all settings required for it. Now let's have a look on this slicing software. I will just quick show all the options that you can choose. And then we're gonna connect the printer via the VIP and I'm gonna give you a demo of what you can do and how you can slice the object in this simple 3D slicing software. The connection with the printer is practically instant. When you click on the connect button, it's instantly connected. Here you can change the name of the printer if you want. I just keep it stock, how it is. Here is some information about your printer itself and the control panel. And here is a control panel. Here you can move your printer around on every axis. You can change that jog move to continuous or not continuous. You can center X, I or Z axis, make current position to zero, change X, I and Z speeds, enable or disable staffing models, including the servo. And here you can change the LED color to any color that you like. If you can find your color, you can make one. And here is a quick demonstration of that. It is pretty cool actually. Here is extruder controls. You can change the motor speed or extrude duration, motor controls for the reverse or stop, temperature controls and so on. You can open your model by clicking on the icon load or you can go here on the file and then load your model. When you load your 3D model there is a couple of things that you can do with it. On the left side you can see the five icons that's view, move, rotate, scale and cut. By clicking on the view icon there is a couple of views that you can choose and see your models from. If you click on the move, you can click and drag your model around and you can set position on the platform, center or the reset in any time. By clicking on the rotate, you can click and rotate your model on every axis and again if you're stuck somewhere, you can simply click again on the same icon and just click reset. Using the scale icon, you can easily scale your model to any size that you want you can just simply click to the maximum if you just want the biggest model that you can print and in any time you can just click the reset and the model will just reset to the original state. Now these four icons are pretty basic and practically any slicing software has it but this last one which says cut on it it's pretty interesting. Not only that you can cut the model on a X, Y and Z axis separately by choosing your measurements and you can even use just your mouse freely and cut your model from any angle that you want, how many times that you want. So that's pretty unique and uh, awesome feature that this slicer have. And in any time you can undo your process, simply by clicking on the undo. And there is also one unique feature that this slicer have and that is the support. There is a two types of uh, support that you can add to the model. One is a tree-like and the second is a linear. And the best part, you can add these supports manually wherever that you want, in both ways. And that is awesome. 
you can even auto generate these supports and if you don't want to have any of these supports you can remove them easily one by one or just add them one by one wherever that you need support so i'm actually dying for this option in akura and the only slicer that is actually a good one and have this option is the Simplify 3D and the Simplify 3D is very expensive. Now if we click here on the print quality there is a couple options that we can change. We can change the material type, PLA, conductive PLA or flex. We can add support, RAF, wall and brim. And there is a four type of the resolution that you can choose. Low, standard, high and hyper. There is also a button with the more options and here you can change the layer height, shells, infill, speed, temperature and others. You can even see here how the layer height is changing by changing the different resolution and the infill and the speed is changing as well if you choose the different resolution. After when you choose which setting that you want, you can simply click on the OK and then save your files to the G code, for example if you want to print over the USB or you can just click here print and print directly via VIF. Here you can see all the layers, how your model will be printed and you can simply click here on the print and the program will send the file over the VIF directly to your printer and you can see here the status of it. And there is one more unique feature than this slicer have and that is options that you can 3D print your image. So you can add any image that you want, you can choose different series, plane, cylinder, container type, box type and you can print them and that's pretty cool. And now it's time for printing. There is a pre-sliced test print so for this one I'm just gonna go for it. To remove the print, just slide down this build plate. And here is our first test print. Pretty decent print, looks like the temperature is a little bit higher but let's show some Benji and see what happens. Another cool option that I realized with this printer is that you can see the preview image what are you actually printing and that's pretty cool. And the first Benji printed with hyper resolution is done. It's actually looking very good, but I can see that small line on the upper part of the print. And I'm guessing that that's because of the high temperature. Next we the range we printed with high resolution, also showing the same effect. So I lower the temperature to 200 degrees and we will see what the results will be. And this 3D Benji now looks very impressive line is totally gone so the temperature was definitely here an issue 220 degree is a way too much by default so 200 gives awesome results my next print is gonna be the small dragon i printed this small dragon in high resolution and default speed which is 50 mm per second and the results are great. And the only change in the settings that I did 
that is the lowering temperature till 200 degrees. And all the models that I'm gonna print in this review will be printed at 200 degrees. Taking these supports was very easy as well. Couple of minutes and the part is cleaned. And the finishing part is looking very impressive. This dragon printed with high resolution only by lowering the 200 degrees the temperature on the PLA is looking phenomenal. I love it. My next print is gonna be the Darth Vader from Tingors. And here I noticed one more cool option with this printer and that is how every time when it's printing support the whole model actually drops down a bit and then the nozzle jumps to the next support. And there is a great because by doing this nozzle will never knock down the support or the 3D printed part. And by the way all these supports the flash print software add by itself. This is 3 like support. I just click auto support and this is what I got. After the cleaning this is the result. This Darth Vader is looking great. This is again printed at 200 degrees PLA using the high option profile in a flash print. Actual layer height of this model is 0.14 mm, not even 0.1 or 0.08 which is options for hyper resolution that I think really is overkill. I don't think that I will ever print in 0.08. It just simply there is no needs. I mean if you're looking right here into this next print, printed again with high resolution on 0.14 mm, it's really looking great. I mean this is phenomenal results just just clicking on the high resolution, lower temperature to 200 degrees and I just click print. And this is why that I like this printer, it's because print after prints, it just gives you great results with no effort at all. So I just slice the model, just click on print, after 2 minutes it was already printing in other room and I just wait for the sound and I go there, grab the prints and they are looking great. I don't even look at it by the way when it's printing and that's very really impressive. And the building size 140 mm by 140 by 140 is not really that bad. I, mean, I think for the most people and especially for the, for the new beginners and for the kids, this is more than enough and, and you can create a very awesome prints with it. I mean, for example, this oval is printed at uh, that uh, maximum height, which is 140 mm and to be honest, it's not really that small. And now it's time for some speed test. I printed my favorite mobile stands, like always, at 100 mm a second, but keep in mind it's only the inner wall which is 100 mm a second, out wall is 50 mm a second, but still indeed it's looking impressive. And don't you think that I'm not gonna remove this cover from the extruder and show you guys what is inside. And inside we find the Tower Pro, the micro servo, which actually is using for the moving that probe with the micro switch on it. I like here also how the, all the cables are attached to, the, to this small board and then the flex cable take over it. And I definitely like here how this 3D printer has not only one or two, then four duct nozzle which blows the air on every single side of the nozzle and no wonder it's why it's creating so great prints. And under the hood I found this. Great motherboard made by company Nuvoton, which is the Taiwan based semiconductor company, which has pretty advanced microprocessor and microcontroller chips. Maybe I didn't mention that all the noise from this printer is coming from this small fan and if you stop it, it's completely silent. But even with the fan on, this 3D printer never passed 48 decibel, which is one of the most quiet 3D printers that I have. And now the final words. Well guys, I think that you already know that this 3D printer is my favorite small size 3D printer for now. This is by far the best implementation between the 3D printing hardware and the software that I ever reviewed so far and for sure this is the easiest 3D printer to use that I ever tested so far. Anybody can use this 3D printer and get very good quality prints without no effort at all. I think that great package like this must have a higher price and to my opinion it's totally worth it. Well guys, I hope that you like my review of the Flash Forge Finder 3D printer. If so, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you like and if you like to check this 3D printer or any other 3D printer, please have a look in the video description. Till next time, take care and good luck with your printing. Bye bye.